right. I mean, you say. Uh, it, the the rule, the game itself, like if you're playing by the the quote unquote rules, then ten would be the number. But you, we're not really playing. We're just trying to be funny. We should play this though sometimes. Oh no, absolutely, we should play this. Uh, we played last night with Mister and Mrs. Other Guy, and it was, it's so much fun, man. It really is like a ridiculous amount of fun. Can we have a uh, a testing? A mic check, mic yeah. check, one two one. Yeah, I went. I've uh. Coming since straight out of Compton. A, yeah, since we have a guest with us, I uh, I switched back to the old mic. Nice. Oh, is this the good mic? No, it's just what I've been using. Oh, man. Boy, my face is pretty close to it here. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, um, testing, testing, one, two. Um, there you go. My You're good. pajamas are bananas. My bananas are pajamas, pajamas, pajamas. I don't think that's a real song. Um, it's not. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think it's possible that it could be. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. No, I want to hit you in the face. You are the worst one. Two guys, one podcast, and I'm the other. You just don't know which porn corn I am. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast, and we also have our mutual friend to the studio. Yeah, uh, it is a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Tell us the tale of woe. Two guys, one podcast, and this is the podcast. Uh, so hey, how you guys been? Uh, pretty good. It's the summer starting, you know, nice and easy. I'm not going through these mother. These are too many goddamn cars to go through. I'm just picking random. Yeah, that's. I, I didn't mean like for you to look through them right now. I mostly meant like, you know, shift idly as as there was a lull in conversation. Somebody else was talking, and you were looking for something to. As long as I got a stack of cards in front of me, there will be a lull. There, there will be a lull. I <laughs> you won't be able to stop. You won't be able to stop. Okay, well then, pick out some cards, and then we will talk. What's the how do the, how does it work? Like how do we? Um, so, how you would actually play is this: like you'd have, you have a. We're talking about Cards Against Humanity, by the way. If I use any of this, just for reference. Um, so you take a black card and you turn that up, and you would say you'd read it. You'd say a wise man said everything is about sex except sex. Sex is about blank, and you turn that up on the table, right. and then everybody else would pick their card, and what you generally do then is you slide it into a, to one pile, and one person scrambles and you know reads all. You know what we should all. do? You know how... Um, and that way it's... You can kind of... There's clearly, hey, that one's the that one's the best one. There's a table yeah. consensus You know how my bim bam gets on a tangent, and they talk about stuff, stuff and then every once in a while it's like, you want a Yahoo? You want a Yahoo? Would you like to Yahoo? Well, we get on tangents, and if we want to, like throughout the show, we just go, hey, you want a cards? Would you... Would you and then you, you flip like over a card? black one, and we all pick one. All right, I'm fine with that. All right, so we're going to play this uh, a little bit as we go along in the show. Um, Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Joined this week by our mutual friend. Hello, sir. Good day to you. (laughs) Uh, It's always a good day when we get to hang out. Um, I, uh, I actually have quite a lot of notes, and I know that my uh, my partner here um, had a lovely vacation. Yeah, man. I was horribly sick, but it was still pretty grand. <laughs> you know that's a good vacation if you were sick and you still enjoyed yourself. That that must have been a damn good time. We're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about that as, to, uh, as well as we go along in the show. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the rundown. It's a good place to start. This is episode 101. Thanks, everybody, for uh, hanging out in our uh, anniversary episode. We had a good time with that. Uh, We appreciate you uh, enjoying our best of, too, while we took a week off last week. Or one of us did, anyway. Um, (laughs) I'm not going to apologize for that. (laughs) You tried to get me to go with you. 
Uh, I, I just, I, the time and the money and the and the effort, it was too much for me. Also, I'm a lazy bum. Um, Mostly the effort then. Yeah, we've got a word of the day. <laughs> We're going to do that. We're still uh, enjoying our 1920s slang. Uh, we've got listener mail. We're going to do that. Ooh. Yeah. we got a little old news. Some, My favorite kind of news. That's right. Some southern discomfort. Ooh, that doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> yep. Uh, we'll play in If You Could. And then finally, we got a word from Bob Ross. I'm glad If You Could's making a comeback. Me too. It's always been probably my favorite segment. I'm working. Although a word from Bob Ross is really giving it a run for its money. I, I, I do enjoy the Bob Ross. Uh, Bob Ross is a great way to round out the show. <clears throat> um, if You Could is, uh, well, I don't know. Some of my favorite segments from the show ever are, are in If You Could. So I'm, I'm glad that I've got a couple of those that I've thought of that have come across my desk so to speak anyway uh first off let's do word of the day what we do in word of the day i appreciate you guys both did lines in between that that bumper (laughs) uh word of the day uh what we're doing is bringing back 1920 slang uh so this is a a word or a phrase that was popular in the 1920s it's fallen out of the vernacular we're going to bring it back for you so this week's word of the day is blue nose did we already do blue nose? Did we? I don't know. What's a blue nose? Maybe. Are you gonna, I, aren't you going to guess? Yeah. What do you what, would, what do you think it is? What do you uh, what, 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 what do you think it is? I think it's somebody who's like hoity toity. Uh, their nose is blue because it's up in the air. That's what I was going to say too. Actually, hmm. uh, it's a term for a prude or an individual deemed to be a killjoy. That's a blue we, nose. I think we've done. I think this we've one. done that one. Yeah. All right, that's maybe, cool. Maybe. I'll get another one. Let me see. I don't New- know. You you poo pooed some man scout points, so I felt like taking a big old dump on this. One. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. We'll go. We'll get another one. Hang on just a second. Let me get another word of the day here. Um, how about uh, what you tell? What? Because I want to say I guessed a blue nose was a drug head, like a like a coke addict the first time. Oh, maybe so. Um, all right. Makes your nose turn blue. Back in the twenties, it did. How about this one, bubs, bugs, bubs, b u b s. Uh, I mean, Wolverine pretty much has told us what bubs is. Some guy <laughs> you're about to kick his ass. <laughs> it's a, it's a guy you don't care to know the name of. No, uh, bubs was slang for a woman's breasts. Uh, really? I'm done yeah, with that. B u b s. It's a nice set of bubs on her right there. Yeah. Um, Let's go polish some bubs. <laughs> Do you polish them? Uh, the wax them is more. Depends on how much I'm getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We'll try to use that somewhere in the show. Um, next, we got some listener mail from Mr. Jones. Javale! Javale is here! Ooh. Me and Mr. Mr. Jones. No, no, not really at all. Um, Mr. Jones. See, you, you what? went... Uh, you went, uh, come on, who's chicks sung rehab? What? The the singer that died sung. Amy Winehouse. Amy Jane, Winehouse. You went, oh, yes. You went with Amy Winehouse, right? Uh, no, that's uh, the old soul song. Miss, yeah, me and Mrs. Jones is the is the song. Me, uh, you know, we got a thing going on. It's an old soul song. You don't know this. Uh, it's all about. Uh, it's like. Um, I mean, it's adultery is what this song's about. I thought, obviously, I thought you were very poorly doing the Counting Crows. Me and Mrs. <laughs> see, Jones. see, I thought I went Counting Crows with it, but what you were singing, I was like, man, he's fucking terrible. Well, he's a much <laughs> more soulful guy than either of us, really. I I don't I should have gone Mr. Jones, the Counting Crows song. I didn't even think about. It. I'm sure that's what I thought of when I called this guy Mr. Jones in the in the uh, notes because that's not oh, his you're actual just name. About his wife, <laughs> <laughs> Freudian. Um. So he and I were having a conversation. We were going back and forth. He sent me a, uh, some listener mail uh, talking about the anniversary episode and how much he was enjoying the show. But then he was also saying that he had a show that, based on our suggestion of What Say You, we enjoyed What Say You, he, ch- he started listening to that show and he loves it. But he found another show based on his listening to that, and he's like, I got to listen to more of it before I suggest that you guys review it, but I want to tell you about that. And so we were having a conversation back and forth, and I said, hey, I got this idea long term. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record interviews with uh, people that I've known in my life, like friends from childhood or like you know, the old lady that lived next door or something like that. I want a story from them, from their life, since I haven't seen them, or 
from before I saw them if it's somebody that's in my life currently. And I'm like, that's something over creepy, a long. Though. Why? No, like, you're just going to show up to a lady that you, she probably doesn't fucking – we've had enough old news on this show to know <laughs> not, old people aren't always right in the head. No, 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 no. Look, you, it's not like I'm going to just knock on people's door and be like, like you're gonna you don't on- remember me, but I'm a, I'm a fellow that's on the internet. I'd like to record you talking into this microphone for a while and then put that out for everybody to listen to. And to no, put I won't you do it randomly. I'm going to use my Columbo voice. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we uh, got the Columbo. Uh... Uh, I don't know. Is it just me? <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I'm going to do. I went. I meant like, like phone ahead. Like make like a reach out to people specifically. Be like, hey, you and I haven't seen each other in a while. I'm going to be in town for this thing. I was wondering if you, if we might could have a conversation. I do this thing on the internet. I was wondering if you'd be interested in telling a 15 minute story and hanging out with me for I'm a second. I'm sure we just have lived our lives differently because <laughs> if I just phone up somebody I haven't seen in a couple of years, I'm like, hey, I was wondering if we could do this. And they're like, uh, no, dude, there's a reason we haven't talked. <laughs> there's a reason we haven't spoken yeah. to each other. I'm like, oh, shit. Sorry, man. I forgot. <laughs> So that's not even the but so we were having this conversation. Interview. Yeah, probably it probably would. <laughs> and and I'm telling him about this idea and he says, "Oh, are you like a separate show, another podcast?" question mark. Awesome. I'll subscribe to anything you put out. You've got me completely hooked. Instead of turning on the TV hey, now, if you if you would just uh if you just lift his head up from your crotch, we could actually hear him mm. say that. Thanks. Instead of turning on the TV now, I go for my phone. Today I was on the back porch and I had my buds in while um, my son was playing. He looked at me kind of funny and asked if he would, and I asked if he would like to listen too. Oh, good lord! So I put one earbud in his ear while I've got the other one. He looked up at me confused for a few minutes as we listened uh, together. Suddenly he looks at me and says, "Fuck!" I was ashamed and elated at the same time. I shared a moment with him that I'll never forget. Not his first word by any means, but his first curse. And nothing, some, and not something soft like shit, but the mother of them all. Thanks for that. Wait, was he listening to our show? Yeah, they were he listening to somebody's kid to say fuck. Yes, it only, it only took a hundred episodes, man. <laughs> he's, a, he's a cool baby, is what he is. <laughs> It's, it's my favorite part of Mabimba Bam. I don't know if I'm proud of that. <laughs> this show is not for children, which I say. Only you should to, always be proud of what you uh, made. I you think, know, like if if you made that and you don't like it, maybe you need to change how you look at yourself. You should how make many some times? New shit. How many times do you flush a toilet and go amazing? <laughs> <laughs> well, Almost every time. Not, not so many times now as I will in the future, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what pears will get you right there. Amazing. All right, let's get this play back on track. Uh, you want a card? We need a card. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Our first card of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, why am I sticky? Your question is, why am I sticky? <laughs> my answer forcing a hand job on a dying man <laughs> oh my why are you sticky other guy i've been picking up girls at the abortion clinic <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh that's terrible mine surprise sex <laughs> that's a good that's, that's a, a good, good reason to be sticky <laughs> Yeah, it's easy own. enough to get sticky that way. Um, all right, let's go to a uh, little old news. What was that? It's called the medium sketch. The medium sketch? Yeah, it wasn't rare, and it certainly wasn't well done. <laughs> all right, this comes from adweek.com. Is that right? Let me see. A-D-W-E-E-D? Yeah, no, I can read. I'm wondering if the if the link is correct. Yeah, no, it is. This is from adweek.com. Um Headline, perfect match. Brazilian kids learn English by video chatting Dude, with say, lonely say, elderly Americans. I got to say, I was going in a very different place based on the first three words of that sentence. <laughs> perfect match, Brazilian. Yeah, <laughs> and knowing that it's old news. I was like, oh, you were like, are we about, about to talk about old lady muffs? Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I thought we were going to talk about. 
No, we're not going to talk. I mean, earmuffs, maybe. Earphones, perhaps. Perfect match. Brazilian kids learn English by video chatting with lonely elderly Americans. FCB's touching work for a language school. This is, um, uh, the writer was Tim Nudd. It's such a great, simple idea. Young Brazilians want to learn English. Elderly Americans living in retirement homes just want someone to talk to. Pedophiles <laughs> just want to see young Brazilians. <laughs> Why not connect them? <laughs> It FCB like a very bad service. FCB Brazil did just that with its speaking exchange project for CNA language schools. As seen in the touching case study below, the young Brazilians and older Americans connect via web chats, and they not only begin to share a language, they develop relationships that enrich both sides culturally and emotionally, and occasionally sexually. <laughs> I want to see a, I want to see it. That's not true. I want to see a test of those kids who are learning English this way. I want to see their first experience documented experience in the u.s and them having to carry on conversations with people their own age and they can't figure out why the fuck these american kids don't know who the fuck matlock is <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's one of the things i talk about the slang is a little different um the differences in age and background combine to make the interactions remarkable to watch the participants clearly grow close to one another to the point where they end up speaking from the heart in a more universal language than english the pilot project was implemented at a CNA school in Liberdade, Brazil, and the Windsor Park Retirement Community in Chicago. The conversations are recorded and uploaded as private YouTube videos for the go teachers Bears. to evaluate. Ah, uh, there you go. The teachers get to evaluate the program. So that would weed out any. So there was, there's not Better any. Asterisk. Uh, that's wonderful. I'm very glad to hear about your school today. Could you maybe lift your skirt a little bit or point the camera lower? Same. Just. It's a little lower. Columbo took a turn. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's my old... <laughs> Columbo got know. dark. Is it just me? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me that wants to see your tits. That's Maybe it's just me. Um, the idea is simple, and it's a win-win proposition for both the students and the American senior citizens. It's exciting to see their reactions and contentment. It truly benefits both sides, says Joanna Montiero, executive uh, creative director at FCB Brazil. Um, the beauty of this project is in CNA's belief that we develop better students when we develop better people. Um, the I think I think Lex Luthor would disagree with that. Why? I think Lex Luthor would be using this opportunity to build himself a Brazilian army. Yeah, like <laughs> like he's not trying to build better people. He's trying to build better old androids so that he can brainwash all these kids. You know what? I think you're onto something there. I think the way to take over a place using androids is by making them look old no <laughs> one will suspect it it's just suddenly a bunch of like i i think you just stumbled onto the plot line of terminator genesis now filming in new orleans <laughs> <laughs> man come I, with me if you want to go to the geriatric nursing home also there's a there's a buffet that starts at 4 30 <laughs> it's all you can eat shrimp cocktail it's pretty early buffet man and <laughs> we got to beat the rush crowd. <laughs> I have a coupon. <laughs> it's not a coupon. It's only good before 5 p.m. It sounds like a New Orleans national. <laughs> it's only, have a coupon it's, to eat at night. It's only, it's only good after 5 p.m. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was a good one. Um, let's play a little Southern Comfort. Ooh, they say, I, the only reason I truly, the only reason I like this is because the guessing option I have, because it generally makes people in the South look fucking terrible. Yes. And you don't get it right after like the first six times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that sounds, sounds a lot like an Arkansas story to me. And I'm like, nope. You're I'm, like, Mississippi. Nope. <laughs> I've gotten one right. you gotten one right. Mostly I give them away before we it, get to the end well, of the article. Well, if it's the right kind of crazy, I know it's Florida. It's hard to self-censor every mention of the location and all you know city names that would give it away. Nobody wants to hear you fucking whine. You're a professional, so do your goddamn <laughs> job. I mean, why don't you just write? Like, are you writing that down? Or are you reading it from I'm the reading the article. Uh, I guess you just got it pulled up on your phone. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't expect you to actually do any actual... <laughs> <laughs> preparation or anything <laughs> all right let's let's get all right in this, let's get in the south here's here's the headline i called it by the way at the top of the show southern discomfort because of this headline hazing hell fraternity suspended for pouring hot sauce on genitals texas 
Oh man, I don't like I you pick this out for all kinds of reasons <laughs> I'm not comfortable with. <laughs> the the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity a Phi a! has been suspended for hazing. Um the university fraternity has been suspended after students admitted to hazing that involved paddling and pouring hot sauce on the pledge's genitals. University officials launched an investigation. Who's, in, who's going to complain about that? I would imagine the fellow with the hot sauce on his nuts. Well, first off, look, man, hazing doesn't work that way. Like, you're going to tell, hey, look, man, I'm going to pour hot sauce on your nuts. And either the guy stays and gets hot sauce poured on his nuts, or he leaves and he gets cut from the fucking fraternity. I know how this shit works. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, okay. If you stayed and you but, got hot sauce on your nuts... What kind of what kind of asshole does that make you look like? Well, yeah, I agreed to having hot sauce on my nuts, but then it, it kind of sucks. So, well, maybe he but thought then you it get was kicked a, out anyway. Yeah. yeah, for being a pussy. <laughs> no, but maybe he thought it was like a Abraham Isaac kind of situation. Like God told Abraham to sacrifice his kid, but in the end, he didn't have to sacrifice his kid. I'm sure you know that, what I'm saying? Well, that I guess both of them lot. learned a lesson. <laughs> <Burning> houses. <laughs> You know, it's like history. History. Okay, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say just because hot sauce was down. used. I'm gonna say Louisiana. Well, you're you're way too early. Don't make a guess yet. I, there might be more. I'm probably gonna give it away in a minute. So give it a second. Are you trying to? Or, or is it Louisiana? And you're trying to shake me off the trail. I don't know. Uh, the officials for the university say the fraternity wasn't supposed to be admitting any more members. They were already on, uh, I guess, double secret probation. <laughs> 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 but a dozen students were trying to gain entry. Ten students denied the hazing, but two admitted it after initially denying it. Ah, see, here you go. N- nobody came for. I mean, they didn't come forward. These guys were under investigation for this shit already. Apparently, there's just a bunch of folks that really want their, their nuts burned off. Here's the thing is, if they're not part of that campus anyway, and they've already been kicked off campus, and they're not supposed to admit members... Then what the fuck is the campus involved with it for? All this is now is just a group of students who have formed a club off campus. <laughs> a a nut burning club. <laughs> um, the officials revoked the fraternity's registration until August 2016, which means it's no longer considered a campus organization. You're right. Until August. So they revoked it until August 2016? Yes. So what is that, a year? They get a year of probation? Uh, well, that was before, I think, this current nut-burning incident. All right. The fraternity didn't have a house on campus. Current membership included fewer than 10 people. Wait a minute. So you only got 10 people, and and you have set the bar at membership on this club at you're going to have to let us put hot sauce on your nuts. <laughs> and there are 12 people lined up at the door to get in? I don't understand it. What the fuck are they doing in the house that's worth... Coke and hookers? <laughs> It's got to be some damn good blow, is all I'm saying. <laughs> you want a card? Uh, can you, should guess the, you should guess the state first. Kentucky. Incorrect. You got to guess our mutual friend? <clears throat> how about... Yeah, how about... Does Tennessee count? It does. Yeah. Tennessee. It Ding, ding, ding. We got a winner. First... First Southern Comfort for him to play, and he walks away a winner. It's like a in the park home run or some shit. I'm very like very that. skilled. Shut up, must card. <laughs> Your next card, gentlemen. Dear Abby, I'm having some trouble with blank, and I would like your advice. <laughs> Dear Abby, I'm having some trouble with blank, and I would like your advice. I have. A windmill full of corpses. <laughs> Dear Abby, I'm having trouble with a robust mongloid. <laughs> Dear Abby, I'm having some trouble with concealing a boner, and I would like your help. <laughs> Duh. Very good. <laughs> All right. I can help your boner. <laughs> I don't want you to help my boner. Oh, here's what I'm helping it with. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's great blow. It's great blow. Mm. Um, so 
does your does the story about your vacation fit into a segment in particular, or, or do you just have some some? I mean, I guess it could be Southern Comfort perambula- perambulations. Well, it can't be Southern Comfort because I know where you went. <laughs> yeah, to fucking New Orleans. Yeah, exactly. It's in the South. Okay, all it right. It was comfortable. It fits our criteria. <laughs> it's it's what we call lanyap. A little bit of something extra. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's the lanyap section. <laughs> all right, then. Good luck Googling it, motherfuckers. <laughs> There's a silent G in there somewhere. <laughs> Least, there might be four at of least them. one yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think there's there's several A's and an I and at some point as well I'm pretty sure so we've uh, all three of us have been lucky enough to do a lot of traveling yeah. yeah we've gone overseas we've crossed the nation we've been to a lot of different cities mm-hmm. I gotta tell you man we don't really talk up that we're from Louisiana a lot on this show. Yeah, we didn't do it at all at first, and we've like circled it more and more it's and more as the show has gone. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if this is just because I'm proud of the state that I come from, but New Orleans is a fucking gem of a city, man. It's a good town. There's so much good going for it. So I thought... We could give the people some advice who are thinking about coming to New Orleans of things to do, places to go, things to stay away from. Right? Yeah. I like this idea. So I took a couple of notes of some places we went and things that we did. Uh, the majority of the things uh, uh, that formed our itinerary came from the first night. Uh, we were walking down Bourbon Street. It started to rain. We took a turn into the French Quarter down a random street and ended up at uh, Pirate's Alley, which is a very small corner bar. It's an absinthe bar, and there's only like six people at the bar. It started raining. Nobody else was coming in. One of these people at the bar was I lucky enough to meet. He can only be described as New Orleans' version of Stefan from Saturday Night Live's Weekend Update. I wrote down some actual quotes that this dude said about bars we should visit while we're in the city. Okay. One of them is dungeons. All right. That's how the bar is described. Yeah, you should guys should check out dungeons, man. They've got kittens and chains. They've got the wrong end of a knife fight. They got no dollar hookers. I'm banned there for life, but you'll love it. <laughs> They've got no dollar hookers. No dollar hookers. <laughs> I'm banned for life, but you'll love it. All right. We didn't go. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think I want to go to dungeons either. But we did. <clears throat> the next- they're, 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 just, uh, they're just threatening to get themselves shut down by PETA anyway. Kittens and chains. Kittens and chains. <laughs> you know what? Is this a, is this a stuffed kitten? That's right. Do they just have mama kitten factories just pumping out these kittens? That they just put in chains? The kid never felt freedom. And what kind of chain is it? It's like a, a chain around the neck like you do like a pit bull? <laughs> or is it chains? Is it like like pinhead style chains <laughs> no. from Hellraiser? <laughs> I, like, I like to imagine that it's like a gigantic like pit bull style collar, like studded collar with a chain on it. The collar's way too big for the cat. The cat, in fact, is just laying in the middle of the collar. It's not actually attached to the cat in any fashion. Yeah, I don't Kittens think that's how chains. he just got described that at all. Probably not. Based no. on like the other parts of the description of that place and the dude that's telling it, I'm, I'm guessing these kittens on, in chains aren't cats. You think so? Like they'd be people, right? Like probably. You so. think it's people dressed as kittens? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I bet it's like a like a like maybe it's slang. Like sex kittens. Yeah, like a bondage club or something. It could be no man. dollar hookers. I mean. <laughs> Those aren't just laying around. And if you don't pay them, you might find yourself at the wrong end of a knife fight. Uh, That's right. You know, our friend the professor, he experienced some no-dollar hookers once in Ohio. Uh, we told this story, I think, once on the podcast. It was at the uh, the Zodiac Lounge, which was a n- – it's in, in the city limits strip club, so they couldn't actually be a strip club. The chicks wore bikinis and danced on the poles. It also was inside the city limits, and since they did those sorts of things, you couldn't serve alcohol there. So you tipped girls dancing in bikinis. Yeah, you threw quarters at them mostly is what <laughs> the professor did. He snapped them out? He snapped quarters Why, at uh, them. 
<laughs> he got a roll of quarters and he flicked quarters at you know the strippers. You know you could have. You oh, know you could have just went to the <laughs> beach during spring break and got that shit for free. Well, it didn't but cost you much of this. Snapping quarters right. at another person. Yeah, you try snapping quarters at a woman on the beach. See how long. <laughs> the thing you is, last. I don't know how. I don't know how y'all got to stay in that strip club. Because I've gone to a strip club and I've thrown the dollar coins, <laughs> right? Yeah, they don't stand for that shit. No, no, it's a dollar. It's a, it's just like the paper money I've been throwing at you, and you're gonna get pissy because you got a quarter size bruised on the inside of your thigh now. <laughs> just because I was should, making you should, it hail. You should fucking <laughs> you should fucking thank me because now you have a legitimate reason and a story, and you don't go around looking like a fucking hooker with bruises on your thighs. Like, oh, some dude threw a fucking dollar coin at me, hit me in the thigh, I got a bruise. Now you don't seem like a fucking slut. Uh, I think you would seem like a worse uh, slut, perhaps, if you, you worked at the style you don't of have establishment. To say, she doesn't have to say the story took place in a strip club, man. <laughs> she could have just been on the bus and some dude threw it. I was just exposing it. my upper inner thigh and someone hit me with a quarter. <laughs> dude, have you seen the that? shorts these girls are wearing nowadays? Man, I saw... I, <sighs> this, is how I knew I, this is how I know I'm old. I realized it the other day at the grocery store. It was a girl in front of me at the grocery store that I know for a fact was legal because I was standing behind her in line at the at the cash register and I looked at her driver's license because I, I wouldn't have believed it. I'm not creepy at all. <laughs> Try do the rest of it in the Columbo. If voice. you could wait, if you yeah yeah <laughs> because if you could see her uh, age, if you could maybe, see her, maybe it was me, but uh, her, her shorts were showing off her ass too much is what I thought. I thought you know somebody should have told that woman and to I put on some know, shorts. And I needed to know where she lived so I could go <laughs> tell right. her parents. I needed to go <laughs> tell her father. Do you know your little girl is walking around with her ass hanging out of her pants? Do you know that? Hmm. Maybe it's me. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Like if you could read her fucking age. I've never really watched Columbo. I've only that, seen the last five minutes of it a few times. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I she was it was inappropriate. It was just like put on put on Put on a pair of pants, man. Come on. What was inappropriate? Was it was it inappropriate that she was wearing it and she was confident enough in her body to go out in public like that and she thought she looks good and it made her feel better about herself? She was a little or girl. was it inappropriate you that you were legal. looking at it and well, you were womanizing her? I mean, she was 18 or 19 years old or something like that. But, but I mean, she was a woman. She'd do what she wants. She was too young to know that she wanted to wear those shorts out That's what public. you think because now you're old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Yeah, no, the no, inappropriateness. I, I, I agree. <laughs> the inappropriateness uh, was. The awkwardness you felt when you realized that you were the one who were objectifying her, not the other way around. Mm. You're the problem, not her, my friend. How did that feel? Like I needed to go to dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> Get me a kitten on a chain. Free the nipple. <laughs> free, free the nipple. <laughs> Do you have any other hot spots that you... Uh, yeah, afterwards, this was actually... this is Saw this in is, the city? You should definitely do this if you're in the city. All right. After you've gone out, wake up. Go to Aaron Rose, get an iced Irish coffee. What's so special about an iced one? It's like a leprechaun came in your mouth. <laughs> mm. I don't. Magical. It doesn't sound like magically a, delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's that, uh, hmm. not a ringing endorsement. I was gonna say it doesn't really sound very appealing to me. What an iced Irish coffee? It's amazing. No, a leprechaun coming in my mouth. <laughs> I bet it's fucking delightful. I bet it's like rainbows and floral leaf clovers. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. You know, man, and when, me semen. When I think of when I think of leprechauns, I, I don't normally think of like the the ethereal goddess type of mythical creature. Like I typically think of a fairly earthy dude who's just real short and green. What's just like this? Like I like <laughs> I like eating I like eating like smelt roe and sea urchin, right? Which is just their eggs and stuff. What? So for smelt leprechauns row? to me, yeah, it's a fish. It's fish eggs. So, so a leprechaun to me is like me just going through a field, picking them up, like turning them over in my mouth and squeezing them until they until they <laughs> you're saying <laughs> until they 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 magically drip into uh, my gaping yaw. Like you're saying of, you're some sort of like evil combination of Jeffrey Dahmer and Little Bunny Foo Foo for, <laughs> <laughs> for leprechauns? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You, hey, I'm, 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 I'm just saying leprechaun cum has got to be like the best drug known to man. <laughs> I think it's like licking toads, man. <laughs> I would think it's much more potent than that. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Wow. 
No, no to the leprechaun come. Okay, so but after coffee, then? after we get a shot <laughs> yeah, it's in the mouth, coffee. <laughs> after we get a shot in the mouth from O'Shea, <laughs> all right, what happens uh-huh. then? So if you want to try absinthe, I suggest Pirates Alley. Uh, uh, our mutual friend and I did it in uh, Prague. Yeah, I. Th- I don't. I, I still don't think it was like real absent that. Oh, it was absent. Yeah. Here's the thing is, if you like it's licorice like from the wormwood or whatever. No, but it's still absent. Oh, okay. My folks just got the real stuff. The real stuff. Wow. Yeah. Green fairies and all, huh? Yeah, the worm. It's got wormwood and everything. Yeah, if you uh, a little spoon and tell you, you know, my, dude, my folks were nuts though. <laughs> if you like it's, licorice, it's, it's great. If you don't like licorice, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I personally think if you survive raising more than two children, when all of your children are out of the house, the American government order presents you with a bottle of some sort of hallucinogen. Personally, like, I mean, I, <laughs> like, what, what would you like? I uh, here you go, A little absinthe for you. Sure. So what little you, mescaline. What do you guys think <laughs> this, of? Uh, Our parents are like, "Thanks, we got some already. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're solid. We're covered in the mescaline department." <laughs> what do you guys think of Bourbon Street? Um, it's it's a tourist trap mostly. I mean, yeah. it's like that's yeah. where that's where the touristy clubs are. It's where the expensive titty bars are. It's yeah. where it's you a know, good place to find some bubs. I said, some bubs. Oh, oh you sneaky <laughs> bastard! He comes in here and he Dude, wins. We've been comfort. talking about tits. Constantly since we introduced. That's true. I forgot the word was bubs. <laughs> Me too. That's that's all right. In in episode one hundred, the the word of the day was something simple. You and I talked about how how much we were going to use it. We were going to use it so much. In fact, you suggested that I put uh, oh, yeah. a ding yeah, every time we say it. it Hotsy right? totsy was the word. We never said it. Not once in the episode. We, we <laughs> said here's word of the day, and we never went back to it ever. We get so, lost, man. We do. We get sidetracked. <laughs> it's all the absinthe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think everybody should walk down Bourbon Street once and then walk back down it and then never visit it again. Yeah, you just need to pick your day real carefully. The only reason to walk down Bourbon Street is to get to the end where Lafitte's is. Yeah. Well, oh, you don't even yeah. have to walk down Bourbon Street for that. You can go to the other end of the quarter and 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 just come come up right there to Lafitte. Yeah, but uh, you know, sometimes I like seeing cotton candy while I'm going there, <laughs> which is what Bourbon uh, Street is. Cotton candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bourbon Street's a cool place to walk down. Yeah, you know? you'll but, see some crazy shit. And you know what I like? The only, I do, the only reason to go back there is Lafitte's. You know, and I'm not I'm knocking it, but there is something cool about Bourbon Street, and that is that everyone goes. You'll see homeless people. You'll see fucking yeah. Rich ass millionaires. You'll see everything in between. It's it's the full gambit for sure. And I I personally I, I like I like uh, going to Burma Street in really busy times because there's so many people and like that many people in one place at once stops being a bunch of people. It becomes like its own organism. Yeah, yeah and it's a good like it's a good place to find that Burma Street. It's Cra- the crazy. crowd is alive. <clears throat> it's very very strange. Yeah, um, it's a unique experience, and uh, it really is. I, we I were... advise everybody to go to Burma Street for that. Uh, for for that and also for the massive penetration of urine smell. Oh yes, it's like intense. that is constant and continuous. What's really cool is if you go early in the morning after the <clears throat> street sweeper, the company has come and they've washed the streets and everything. Yeah. The piss smell is almost gone for about fifteen you minutes. You have to get there after in. after people wake up and get off the curb and ro- <laughs> roll out of that vomit and call, yes. it, call a taxi and. And before the uh, <laughs> the early crowd starts, before sure, the lunch, crowd. before the regulars show up, <clears throat> Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Other guy uh, hates Bourbon Street for just one particular reason. <clears throat> Why? She says she cannot stand that it is always moist. It is. It's always moist. It's, it all, is. it's always like it just rained there. Sun, sun, fucking shining for a week straight. Bourbon Street is moist. <laughs> it's true, man. Where's that problem. coming from? Um, it's because they have I, to sweep the streets five times a day. Yeah, and they don't sweep it with brooms. <laughs> they, it's sweep also it with, like, they sweep it with hydrochloric acid. Trash and juice and vomit and urine yeah. and spilt beer you know, and liquor. The more we and, talk about this, the more nostalgic I get for it, actually. And, I think I have to change my opinion. And tears. <laughs> Tears, yes, lots of tears on Bourbon. You don't Street. go, dude. You don't go to New Orleans. Like if you if you're going to New Orleans, you're gonna really, really experience like the lifestyle that surrounds Bourbon Street. You don't go there without expecting 
piss and vomit and tears. Yeah, sure. And, and throwing absolutely. the shoes away that you wore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But if you make it from Canal Street job. all the way down toward the end of <clears throat> Bourbon, you'll come upon Lafitte's. <laughs> I thought you were just going to stop there for a minute. No, which is if you make it all the way to the end of Bourbon Street, you come. That's which, what I mean, <laughs> the end. which is which is <clears throat> plugged as the oldest bar in the U.S. Uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it's, you know, it's supposedly like a place like pirates hung out and whatnot. Like yeah, it's well, been pirates there for 150, is, uh, 175, 200 years or something. Yeah, it's like years. Captain Lafitte was like, he was a big time pirate. Yeah. And that's his, is that, John that's who it's named for? John yeah, Lafitte. John Lafitte. Yeah, right, and like yeah. the Pirates Alley, the pirate bar on the corner was the a jail cell that uh, Lafitte had spent some time in. That one, is that the one? Hmm. Right it, next to the cathedral. Yeah, no, I mean, I know, it, but it doesn't. It doesn't have electrical lights, does it? Lafitte doesn't. Lafitte's doesn't. Yeah, that's right. It's thought. all candle Like I mean, they've got electricity in there now, I'm sure, because they got like cash registers and shit, but they don't have – there are no lights. It's all candlelight. Yeah, it's all candlelight. Yeah, so it's, really, only, it's a really dark bar, man. Yeah, it's a bad bar to go to bar. if you're going to pick up somebody because you don't have a fucking clue what they look like. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get four or five So if you're ugly, it's a great in. place to go and pick <laughs> up people. That's why it's or at the end of Bourbon Street. If you're, you if you're really into like sitting in the dark and drinking hardcore by a candle – that's a place. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. It's a unique. It's a new place. I dig it. <clears throat> uh, the only thing is, is a lot of the uh, a lot of the walking tours will stop by like every hour, and sometimes it'll get crowded, and it's a fucking pain in the ass because of that. But why um, are you there in the daytime? No, they do it at night. Like they do booze and booze tours. Yeah, like you drink booze and that. you see hear ghost stories. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I guess I heard about that. But yeah, so I really dug. Uh, Lafitte's really is dug, badass. I'm with you on that one. Yeah, Lafitte's. Yeah. Oh, here's something. Oh man. So one night we're leaving, we're going back to the hotel. We're staying down in the corner, so mm-hmm. in the quarter. So we're walking everywhere, uh, and we and we go into this list. It's like two in the fucking morning, and down one of these alleys, we see a pizza sign. And it's like flashing open. Okay. And we go in there, and this this place reminds me of the bodega from Half Baked. When they're talking about like the bodega where you go to buy weed from and yeah. everything's old and stale. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm not kidding you. We walk in, right? And there's like one little round table in the corner and that's it. And at the cash register was like this young, kind of Middle Eastern looking kid, earbuds in, watching a DVD. <laughs> right? He's the only one in there. It's literally the place, I'm not fucking kidding you, is the size of the studio. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They've got like some old pizza already cooked that you can get by the slice. <laughs> I don't fucking want that. No, no, sir. I want some chicken wings and I want a medium pizza and give them all the toppings, right? Right. So he takes my order, right? Then he goes and opens this little door in the back, picks up a telephone, <laughs> makes a makes a phone call, and then hangs it back up. A few minutes later, a little old hunched Middle Eastern guy comes from the back and starts cooking and like making everything like from scratch, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was the it was the weirdest thing. Wait At a minute. first I thought I was like, holy shit, <laughs> what did he go back and call the f- the stuff before he even charged me, like before he even rang me up, man. <laughs> right. Like I didn't know if it was like a place where drugs were really dropped off and like that bell ha- come in, so he had to call back and be like, no, they don't need the drugs. Just go put it back up. Like it was really weird. <laughs> But it was it was delicious. <laughs> so so like grandpa's taking a nap yes! in the yes! next apartment or something, yeah. and he's like, just and it's like me. two in the morning. Just just, yeah. uh, just buzz me if anybody comes over for pizza. <laughs> yes, and like at two in the morning, the old man comes downstairs, real nice guy, starts washing his hands, cutting the tomatoes and everything. Oh man, but that was good. It was fantastic. <laughs> And then, oh, another thing at the Pirates Alley, man. Do you know what the name of this place is? Pizza. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> just got a sign. It says yeah, pizza. it's in. A, it's in that. It's an alley, man. That's. De- I'll tell you what. Definitely not drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the other thing is. So uh-huh. I think I think there's a secret. I think there's like, like if you're in the know at Pirates Alley, you can get like the good absent. <laughs> right. And there's a there's a spoken code combination, man. And I got to order extra anchovies. No, or dude, something? I think I think I broke it, right? <laughs> so you go up, you go up to it, right? <laughs> right. Uh, or at least this guy like comes up next to me, small bar. He comes up next to me. He says, "I'd like two, right?" And they serve liquor and they serve everything, they serve all kinds of things. But he's like, I'll, "I'll take two. And she says, 
the bartender says, which brand? The answer to that is the French one, to which she will reply, we have three French ones. The answer, the answer to get the secret one is the one you got last night, like, like the one you received last night. And then she goes, oh, okay. And then she goes and like reaches under the table. You overheard this exchange? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the weirdest fucking thing. And I was like, that, what a weird, what a weird conversation to get some booze. Uh, well, okay. Like I'll take speaking. two. I'll take two isn't that crazy. If you've been in the bar for a while and you've, you've come and talked to the same bartender and it's not that busy. Like I've been to... Well, no, okay, no, this, guy came, this guy came through the rain. Like, we'd already been sitting there walked an hour in the front so. door. He walked, walked in. Walked up and said, I'll take two. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's weird. And she says, which brand? <laughs> and he says, the French one. And she says, we have three French ones. And he says, the one you got last night. <laughs> and she reaches under and pours him a drink? Yes. Pours him two drinks? Yes. Nice job. Did you see the label? No. Now somebody's going to try to do that, and then they're going to get, like, knifed in the back. <laughs> <laughs> or or, or, or uh, they're going to have a leprechaun come in their mouth, maybe. <laughs> I don't I'll take seven. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Long no, I thought code. that was real cool. Oh, man. That you got to go the Irish one. Like, you have three <laughs> Irish ones. <laughs> <laughs> I want the fresh one. <laughs> yeah, but it struck me as odd. That is odd. Yeah, I was like, man, that's got to be, like, that's got to be like in the no club secret membership bullshit. But do you think do you think that they knew each other like that? Like maybe this guy comes in all the time and like he says this to her all the time, or is this a guy that maybe heard it from somebody and was trying it out? And she's like, I don't know you, but you got the codes. So it's fine. Right. Yeah. So then it can't be that like it's got to be somewhat widespread. So it's probably not dangerous to try it. No, like that guy obviously knew a guy. Right. Right. He's like, oh, hey, if you want the good stuff, say this. Yeah. And they'll they'll get you the good stuff. I wonder how many times in a night that chick has to go through that, like, sort of cloak and dagger routine. With I people. was there for about three hours, and it was the only time I'd, I'd heard it. <clears throat> you also said there's only six people there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like that kind of place anyways. Yeah. That sounds cool. Now they're going to have, like, 20 people in there. Yeah, and she's like, like, well, I don't know you. You don't know Jimmy. She's going to have to do that whole thing every time. It's going to be take like 15 minutes to get to get an order in. Yeah, oh, and, and while we're in the boat, this, the, so the, the pizza place is pretty sketchy, right? Yeah. And we see these two or two or three drunk girls walk by, and one of them like looks very f- like wanting into the window like she's <laughs> fucking drunk and she needs pizza, right? And she goes to open the door to get in, but this place looks really sketchy, right? Her two friends run back and just drag her away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you may have been lucky to escape with all of your organs. She said the yeah. wrong code. Yeah. Also, here's the other thing. So, like, you have the French Quarter, which is where a bunch of tourists go. And there are some fantastic places in the French Quarter. I suggest start walking down Bourbon Street and then just get lost. Like, you'll find some cool stuff in the Quarter. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, the locals... Really hang out uh, at Magazine Street. A Frenchman. Yeah, yeah. And there's a ton of bars, a ton of cool hit places. We went to uh, the Bulldog. It's a very uh, young place. It's like the, 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 the college spot. Work ha- right near there, actually. I have no idea how many <clears throat> beer is those, that place has. A tremendous amount. Yeah. It's like the menu's like six pages front and back. It's ridiculous, but it was a cool bar, man. It was nice, chill, can have a drink. It's yeah, great. It's a it's a it's a cool place down here. Oak Street's cool. We Oak went, Street's very we saw cool. Rebirth on Oak Street. Yeah, at the Maple Leaf. Um, Rebirth Brass Band plays every Tuesday night there at the Maple Leaf. Every now and then, I'm just walking around and like that. The memory of being in front of that band right then like pretty, hits me, and I'm like, ah, that was a good time. That is you a know? good time. Like, that was that was fun. The, here's the thing with Bulldog, because I tried the Bulldog several different times, and I liked it. But my problem was, if you go on any night when college is in session, like it's assholes to elbows continuously and constantly. Like we were talking about earlier, like how on Bourbon Street the crowd becomes a living yeah, organism. That, mm-hmm. it's, true, it's like it's that true. in the bar. It's, it's like, true, but there's also a lot of pussy in that place, man. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've, I, was never, um, um, I was never single when I went to the Bulldog, so 
that was not so much a concern. If you are me. traveling in New Orleans and you're single, go to the fucking the bulldog. bulldog is a good place for you to probably go. And <laughs> there you go. Unless you're so ugly that you need to go to Lafitte's. That's true. Then go to Lafitte's. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a true story. Also, we we went and did happy hour at Luke's. Man, what's Luke's? It's uh, it's one of John Besh's restaurants that's down there. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I went. Where where did uh, did, were you were you with us for that the 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 restaurant that we went to mm, for yeah all the years? but that wasn't that wasn't Luke's was it no but it was that same dude yeah they had chef a, guy right anyway it's yeah. fi- it's, uh, it's, the, it's it's probably the oysters. nicest it was the nicest restaurant I think I've ever actually been inside oh yeah of. no question maybe the nicest building <laughs> well this Luke's Luke's you don't have to be dressed up or oh okay yeah or anything it's pretty dressed down but uh but uh I'm not gonna go into it but. Uh, I like to sit at the bar. I like to talk to people when I'm down there, right? I'm a very mm-hmm. social person. Uh, end up having a, uh, a real fun conversation with a director uh, at the bar. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, some, it was pretty cool, inroads, actually. Huh? Yeah, I also had a... Uh, Do you I also was, uh No, I mean, I know who he is. We're not going to talk about him on here. But oh, uh, oh, Yeah, right. Okay. But I was also walking down uh, Bourbon Street, and two guys were really struggling to light their cigars with a... Uh, with a uh, a match, and I happened to have a ladder. And one of those like, "Hey guys, I got a ladder. Can I help you out?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah." And they were real, like, real nice about it, and and friendly, and gave me a cigar for it, man. Nice, dude. Yeah, I met two girls from Canada who love Louisiana at Lafitte's, uh, singing around a piano. Huh. What what makes them so like so high <laughs> up on Louisiana? Like what? Just just ha- here's the thing is. New Orleans is a city that understands who butters their bread, <laughs> and that's tourists. Yeah. They get it from the bellhop to the maid to the busboy to the bartender. That everybody, whole city is selling. Everybody is so nice, man. Everybody's yeah. pleasant. Everybody wants you to have a good time. Everybody, they'll give you tips like, hey, if you're leaving my bar, go down so-and-so at about 2 o'clock. It's going to be happening. Like. They upsell each other. Yeah. It's just a good vibe, man. And and you've traveled. Not every place is like that. Yeah, that's true. Like people, even even like cool communities like Santa Fe, man. I lived in Santa Fe for a while. They weren't like that. Uh, if you weren't part of that culture and part of that group, they didn't really care if you were part of it or not. You know? Yeah. yeah. And the New Orleans natives are really, like the people who live there, they're really all about New Orleans, and you know, I think I think Austin is maybe like that. People who pe- people who are from Austin or have lived any time in Austin really upsell it like that. Yeah, uh, New Orleans is kind of like that too. Except for, of course, New Orleans is different than Austin in that it's New Orleans, and like you expect a certain amount of grime, you know, and like you know, if, if oh yeah, if you're gonna go to New Orleans, you gotta expect it's it. a di- it's a dirty city, man. It's yeah. dirty. But it's like it's like functionally dirty. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But some cities you go to, like you go and visit New York. I mean, you don't want to talk to people in New York. Right. Yeah. In New Orleans, you you want to have conversations because everybody's there for a good time, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 how the trip went, man. It's it was good. That's good, dude. That's and a, that's why you good, good people, nice. you good listeners, you supporters. Uh, didn't get a new episode last week, and, and I appreciate you guys listening this week and, and, and letting us take time off. Um, well, you know, I mean, it worked out, and we had a, another um, best of episode, which I, let me tell you why I like the best of episodes, and I like to do that from time to time. I really like exposing the fact that the old episodes, like, there's nothing wrong with them. It's actually the best, it's my favorite thing about this podcast and other comedy podcasts. Like, we occasionally do. News items. We talk old news, for instance, but none of that shit is time sensitive. It like no, almost nothing in our podcast will fade away because you have lost reference to whatever the current popular culture events are. Yeah, every once in a while we'll do some topical stuff. Yeah, but even the topical stuff, we give enough context in the story that you will get the. Ju- if, for instance, you could fi- as I've said before, you could find this printed out on a CD in a time capsule 150 years from now. You could listen to the thing and you could find some humor in it, even if you didn't have a frame of reference. Well, also, while I was down in New Orleans, dude, I bought a record player. 
I'm sorry, the time cap, the time oh, capsule, that's what, that's what and t- listening to it. it. I've never owned like, a record player, man. I've never listened to a record before in my life. Really? Really? There you never is... even listen to one? No. <clears throat> oh wow! It's what an better. Awesome purchase then. Yeah, <laughs> it's better. Uh, well, you know, and I've been thinking about a lot better, of reasons. It's different. It I, is different, in an and there is way. there is there's something about it. Even if you even if the sounds no different, and in your case, like since you got this, the speakers built into the record player, right? right? Like it's not like a stereo type right. setup. So the so it's not like the fidelity. Okay, is hey amazing. man, don't 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 about don't fucking technology who no, do this it. shit make me feel bad all and that I'm, I'm not getting the best is, experience I can't have because no, this is dude. the only experience I've had with it. And you do this shit all the Your time. Record okay, okay, is okay. Perfect for you. Your man. record player is that's cool. Okay, there's good. nothing wrong Thank with you. it. Honey Bun's got a record player just like that. I there's nothing wrong with that style of player. What I'm saying though is this: even in that that's case, a cool, that's a cool record. Even in that case where maybe it's you can't make an. Oh, it's better audio. You can't make that argument. If you go out and buy a thousand dollar turntable and a brand new vinyl, there is an argument to be made that it's a, a more correct audio version than the CD or an MP3. That's not the case with yours. But what you can do is the physical. I'm not damn. It's not the case at my house either. You can't Jack help ass. it. You can't help it. <laughs> what I'm saying is, even if you lose that argument, you still have the argument of the physicality of it. The it's the ritual. ritual. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. The the fucking the accoutrement. I just mind ninja you. Yeah, you did of the see, of the of the vinyl playing. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I like that. I like pulling it out of the sleeve and looking yeah. at the album art. Well, that's also what I was thinking yeah, about. The it's the ritual is, of it's is, great, but also it's so whenever bands are whenever you're producing a vinyl, mm-hmm. right? That's not gonna get. That's not gonna get played on the radio, right? Whatever's on that vinyl isn't for radio play. It's not for airplay, right? So you get a lot of instrumental interludes and stuff, and just riffs that you don't get on a CD, that you don't get on a tape. Uh, it'll fade from one song into another song seamlessly, and that's all stuff that they're doing while they're recording that you don't get because now stuff on the radio is so so extremely produced and polished and it's got to fit this time frame. Well, I think you're just talking about the difference between singles and albums. If you if you're listening to the whole album, you get all that same shit on a CD or No, you don't. Thing. Yeah, you no, do. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay. You, real albums work that way. You're just not listening to well, very many albums. I- yeah. Okay. So, like a regular album that's printed on a CD is most often, I think, printed on out on, on on a record. However, records are typically smaller releases, and so they may have additional content, which may include some of that like extended extended songs. Uh, you know? I, so I uh, p- potentially maybe if it's like a. But I'm saying in the past it wasn't like the vinyl was a special deal. They just hey we we're putting out an album and you put that on vinyl. Right, and so what, what it what is is you want to get maximum in enjoyment. It's a different kind of enter- entertainment if you're doing something in home than how most things are produced now. Uh, yes, okay, that's yes, that's true. Well, just the experience, you were talking about, hey, I had to get up at the end of the thing and flip the record over. You know? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh, we're, we, we were laying in bed listening to something, and, and Mrs. Other Guy, we are um, – we were reading, and she wanted to make a comment on an article, and we're talking, and the music's on. She goes, hey, can you pause that? I'm like, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Ain't no pause. I can stop it. Yeah. And then I can make a guess as where it was. And maybe I'll be right, and maybe I'll be wrong. <laughs> Drop this needle. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I got that in New Orleans, man. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yay for New Orleans. It's my favorite city in the world. It's my favorite city in the if world. If I could live above Jackson Square, I would. Uh, I'd live in Munich. Uh, really? Yeah, Munich's my favorite. I can't. Uh, That's not bad. I am so awkward and in like have zero confidence living in countries where their number one language isn't English. Well, you. I mean, if you live there, then you would learn it. You wouldn't have a choice. It stresses me out, dude. It's anxiety, dude. Italy gave me so much anxiety. Hmm. Well, really? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't like traveling. I love traveling. I don't like travel in this. It's because Americans are fucking assholes mm. and stuff. No, I, it gave me a perspective on how awkward and comfortable people over here must feel when they don't speak English. But it's, dude, it's uncomfortable. It's a feeling I don't like. Not, not just being able to automatically understand. 
I get I can understand that I guess. Um, and I maybe and maybe that's a flaw in me, but it's it, my feelings not going to change toward it. Uh, Italy didn't Italy didn't make me nervous. I didn't even Rome try to did. understand anything in Italy. Oh, in in Rome, yeah, Rome was Rome, Rome was sketchy. Rome made me Rome nervous was scandalous. For, the, for like the first like the first little while we were there, and then after that, I just accepted I was probably going to get hit by a scooter or stabbed in the You're thinking, neck. And we said New Orleans was <laughs> dirty and gritty. Rome is a whole different kind of. Oh dirty. yeah, yeah. That's, oh, um, <laughs> you guys want a card? Yeah, we'll we'll card and then Bob Ross. One more card and a Bob Ross. That's right. What is Batman's guilty pleasure? What is Batman's guilty pleasure? <laughs> Yours pretty good. Well, I got a couple. Batman's guilty pleasure: child beauty pageants. Oh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Not Batman. Uh, child, uh, Batman's guilty pleasure, a White Walker's frozen genitalia. <laughs> uh, you're both wrong because Batman's guilty pleasure truly is actually taking candy from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Give That's me that candy. <laughs> I was also this close to saying that Batman's <laughs> actual guilty pleasure is eating the last known bison. <laughs> <laughs> that I That I would actually pay to see. His meat was tough, it was sinewy, and it was fucking delicious. Uh, that's a terrible Batman. Also, not an acceptable Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the jawbreaker you deserve, but it's the jaw- it's the jawbreaker you need. <laughs> no? I don't, right. uh, no. I turned the monitor off. I did that on accident. All right, you well, guys ready? Well, let's didn't turn the board off. I didn't. I didn't turn the board off. You guys ready for a Bob Ross? Let's let's uh, let's zen out with a little Bobo. Yeah, All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, episode 101 comes to a close. Uh, check out twoguysonepod.com for all your Two Guys One Pod needs. Send us an email. Review us in iTunes or Stitcher if you listen to us there, or even if you don't. Share us with a friend and uh, follow us on all your favorite social media locations. Uh, here is our word from Bob Ross. Just scrape in a few indications of sticks and twigs and other little things in there. People will think you spend hours doing this. (laughs) (laughs) I love that Bob Ross has a show where he actually does a painting in an hour. And he's consciously aware that people who are going to try to paint these things will want other people to think they spent hours on them. (laughs) Oh, I worked on that painting for months. The sticks alone. <laughs> Just look at how many sticks there are there. How long do you think that took? Well, I don't look know. at all those needles I under the pine indications tree. Indications of some sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and twigs. <laughs> Stuff up there. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's your show. Until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And you have been? Our mutual friend. And this has been the podcast.
I mean, they have like a section of the city that's devoted to stray cats. <laughs> you know, like they got, you, you know, that big, they got this big area of like some dugout Roman. It's the you know, Senate. It's the, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. the Roman Senate. Yeah, it's the, it's the Senate and it's, it's infested and completely dominated and overtaken by stray cats. Yeah. It's literally where they killed Caesar. And now that's just a, <laughs> it's, it's an that's, old lady cat home, I that's guess. That's where they keep the stray cats. Like, that's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's there's stray cat storage is where Caesar died. <laughs> 